Good morning, DGC, dude, grow show. I'm in Atcha, and it's harvest time, and Scotty's grow, and it's 5% yeah. humidity in the bakery. Definitely dry in Colorado in the wintertime, uh, but man, we can handle it. We can handle it. Harvest time for me, I don't know, sometimes I don't want to use the word intimidated. It brings work. It brings some stress, but then drying and curing is part of that. We'll get into it a little bit. You're low humidity. Sure. Right. A solution. You control the environment, no? And you're in control, dude. You're in control. Rambo. How are you living, brother? I'm like, good, man. It's chilly down in Denver. It's, it's so early today. The sun isn't even up. Like, we can see. God, it's cold. But dude, you can't fake it. I'm not your mom, okay? You've been up all night. I can see it in your eyes, all right? You're pulling the walrus. Walrus. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good. Hey, happy belated birthday to your brother. It is Saturday. I hope you take the whole day off and have a great one, man. Yeah, you guys can follow me on Instagram as a birthday gi gift. At Josh Grambo. Man, I tell you what, I'm not doing any more of that, uh, oh, I don't want anything. Just buy me anything for Christmas. Boy, that didn't work out. I got floor mats for a car I have floor mats for already, man. I was when thinking about a, a, a name for dude's uh, a new piece he's got there. Like, what about the Gan Dude? The Gan Dude. I, I was thinking Dudolf. Dudolf? <laughs> that kind of sounds Dudolf, you know. I don't know. We got, man, got some options. I hear you, Scotty. I love when my family tries to understand what type of grower I am and what I need, and then this is in my stocking, which is a pH <laughs> and soil moisture meter, which you know, watch the last Wednesday's episode. We talked about it. We gave a review on this type of equipment. But you know, I still said, Oh yeah, I'll definitely she wiped like, Will you use that? I was like, Oh, of course. <laughs> it was still an air set of floor mats. My big gift was a spare set of floor mats. Yeah. I'm to brain and I love. Love, love. Just buy me weed next time, all right? It's like too much. Have you showed people your uh, oh, was... your your switchblade little thing there, Scotty? Yeah, <laughs> Scott has a butterfly nut and vape. Yeah. I would like to say that high quality <laughs> rosin is an excellent gift. High quality rosin for your soda friend. Yeah, it really is. Banner. Hey, but since Grambo is uh, at home today, Banner is here. Happy Saturday, brother. Out it. But off camera. I'm lurking off camera. Ah, I didn't lurk. 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 I wanted to ask you, Scotty, the 35%, I mean, ideally as a grower, you know, uh, you control your drying and curing environment. Two different things there. Drying is, you know, to me, you cut your plant down and you got to hang it up to dry before either dry trim it or wet trim it or whatever you're doing. Um, is that what you're talking about? That yeah, I'm talking. Oh, so yeah, I'm saying that in this room that we're in, in, in the bakery, it's Stinks. <laughs> it stinks. Okay. It just smell like weed. That's, that's what. That's why we decided to talk about it. There was no way Banner was coming over and going to be able to ignore the smell of weed in here, man. But uh, I can taste it. It's like you know, thirty five percent. We'll call it humidity in here. I have everything going in a two by four uh, AC Infinity tent. Nice. I, I set it to where uh, sixty sixty. So sixty. It's not really going to do anything temperature wise so i just took my heat here it's cold in colorado so i turned it down to like 62 degrees and as long as you wear a robe or everybody's got hoodies on uh, so you're you're doing your drying in the two by four tent in the two by four tent yeah and that's so all i'm really doing is controlling humidity uh with that 67 controller can you see if you can get me a 69 controller? That one is. I, I see why that they upgraded them. 69. Dude. I see why they upgraded the 67 is tough to uh tough to program. But I got it to uh, how are you programming it? Via the app or via the controller? I must ask you. Buttons. Wait, buttons, man. I'm looking at buttons. So yeah, I don't know. I do. So I struggled for a while, just really high, maybe a couple of pints with one of the, I had a controller 69. And then once you get the Bluetooth app, that it's so much easier than messing with the, you don't even have to read the instructions at that point. So yeah, anytime okay. you're dealing with the AC Infinity controllers, if applicable, get the app on your phone from AC Infinity or connect via Bluetooth, yeah. so much easier. Uh, oh, yeah. Just as a, just as a tip. But the, uh, where, uh, so I had a question about that. I'm trying to plan well ahead. My harvest isn't for a couple months. 
um, how, I'm like, how many five gallons plant material, when we all can kind of guesstimate or envision in our head, what, what are you getting plant size wise off a five gallon pot? What size space do I need to dry those? I'm like, can I pull it off in a four by four tent? It's uh, funny you say that, man, dude, I, I ran out of room. I had five nice plants and I was running out of room. And what I did was I, I hung them, I guess they call it staggering. So some I hung co- towards the top of the tent and then I would just take a clothesline and hang it towards the bottom, you know, take the next one and hang it towards the bottom of the tent. So I had two kind of rows, I guess, of plant material and you can get a loop it in there. What size uh, can take five, five big ones, man. I use my real buckets, but five decent sized plants are in there. I like it. Yeah. I'm always thinking about that. And I'm also planning ahead to be like, dude, you should just, you know, the week of harvest and the week after just let your mother-in-law know those probably aren't the good times to be around. Cause if I have to, I have tent backup in the house, but I don't want to hold up my flowering room. Like right when those are cut down, I don't want to be drying in there because I want to get right back to that room. That's the most valuable room to always yeah. be run. So I got to come up with a space to pull this off. I think I, I think I'll be able to do it. I mean, say sorry, not sorry, but grow dots for the win, man. I screwed these things up. These were the ones that I had uh, turned the light up and burnt the hell out of them. They looked terrible. I don't know if y'all remember I was debating whether to whether to uh, throw them out or not, and I decided to keep them. And dude, they worked out, and they worked out beautiful. I where Instagram was where I posted. Them. I mean, I got purples in them. The guava gator, you hooked me up with it from loving in her eyes. And uh, yeah, I'm happy, bro. I'm happy. You jump with a clone. Yes, I feel bad. So I am. As I was talking, I was gonna show you all about how to snap a stem and see if it's ready. They snap the stem already, man. But this is how you tell whether it's ready to go in the cure bucket. You know, a little snap. No. Mm-hmm. I mean, some people, I have a buddy that swears by, you can buy for not that much money, like the two pronged wood moisture meters oh, and there's some hacks on those. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, but joint is the way you tell, you know what I mean? But just when it's, getting, honestly, if it's not, like I've had bud ready for like, the snap. It yeah. Blood size and guys eyes. What, I mean, would you recommend a certain stem size that you're trying to get to snap? Nope. Smaller than a pencil. Bigger than, you know what I mean? Less than a... No, it hey, shouldn't snap and break like this. shouldn't snap and break like that. It should be a little bit rubbery. And when it's a little bit rubbery, when there's a little bit of uh, moisture still left in there, is when I want to put them in my five-gallon buckets or whatever I'm curing in my Tupperware. Because every time you burp, you're letting that moisture out. You're burping that little bit of moisture out, you know? So it's... uh. It's important to not get it out. You know, there's metabolic activity going on in there while, uh, you know, while there there's water in there. As soon as you take all the water out, everything stops. Well, like I said, if you don't have an area, just get a temporary area. Tents are so affordable now. Go over to acinfinity.com and hook it up. I think a five by five, 170 something bucks or coupon code dude grows. And, um, yeah, and I'm tempted to see what I can fit in my crawl space here, but having a tent with a fan that'll kick on with already the ports and the controller to be sure it's headed and check. It's pretty sweet. It's hard to keep it around here. It's hard to keep, you know, we drying for long enough. It could be at least seven days, you know, maybe if you want, a lot of people do it up to two weeks, man, but you're not going to do that in 35 even 45 percent humidity you better have mid 60s if you're gonna try to do that. yeah i just finished drying uh, last plant. week here over christmas time and we had to put humidification into our grow i had like and not into the drying chamber but we conditioned that the ambient room and yeah it was tough keeping it moist enough yep leave all of the plant material you can if you're going to be having your replacement air meaning when your controller kicks on because you set your parameter to be like man once this tent gets above whatever 60 percent humidity yeah do an air exchange the air coming in is 35 it's gonna get really dry really quick so yeah having um a way to handle that as far as leaving more leaf material on is a good way to do it don't be stripping your leaf some people will like to take as much off or that hang up I'm not saying leave all the fan leaves off. That kind of depends on your strain, how bushy they get, or what you're dealing with. But and hanging as much of the plant as you can in one piece as well. I know that doesn't always work in a tent situation, but if you can hang, at least just hang a whole plant 
if I could, the whole plant, just one chunk. You can hear people tell you, oh, you have to cut the fan leaves off because it'll taste like chlorophyll. The chlorophyll will get back into the plant. You ever heard somebody say that? No science. Great. No science. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's man, that's such bro science. And I disagree as well. Uh, yeah. I've had mostly good areas to do uh, my drying. And it is a stressful time, I say, when you just want to make sure you don't forget a step. You take a lot of months to get it to that point, a lot of effort. Oh, um, God. Yeah, you want to finish strong. Yeah, so I did good, man. I hung, I hung in the tent for seven days. I think I'm right around day seven. Uh, it's right, ready to cure. I'm going to put it in my little five gallon buckets, maybe cut. I'm not going to cut it off. The, oh, man, I can't show anything. It's ridiculous. Oh, wait. Um, I am going to maybe make branches of it about that big and just throw them in a five gallon bucket, maybe a Tupperware. That pipe is awesome. <laughs> that pipe is awesome. It is awesome. Another tip too: you can leave some. Um, it, you don't have to do the final stem trim. Sometimes I do leave a little branching in the bucket, so it's a little bit of aeration, if you will, in there. The bud doesn't get yeah. packed pack down on itself as well. Banner, what about you? Do you dry uh, in a tent, or do you have a drying area? No, I don't. Wait, how do you dry? Just in the room. Wow, man. 1999 called, man. They I know. I, know. I have a lot of room, man. Look at this smile. This smile's from like just visualizing a room full of hanging buds. Yeah. How wonderful is that? I don't know. The processing becomes more and more appealing, to be honest. What do you mean? Just skipping the. Can you just freeze it and water it? Really? I don't know. It just. It seems like a dude, you know, it's only four times a year you're going to do it. And it's so worth like, it's so worth it. And then you're right. It's like, well, why should, why wouldn't I just go to the store and buy it? And I'll tell you because it's hard to find. Convince me that it will be fun. Right. Can we cook pizzas while we do it, man? It'll be a party, dude. Of course. There'll be weed smoking. It's just or sweet. dabbing. Be good times, good friends, some laughs. Right. All right. You know, what else are you going to do, man? You're just hanging out. You're like just saying make whatever things things do, but yes, I so that sounds like a good idea, man. Sounds like a good party, dude. You coming? So he's saying skip the dry curing, and you're going straight to fresh frozen processing products. Is what you're talking about? Yeah, and I may be saying that wrong, but I like, don't mean I think that's what you do, right? Fresh frozen, wash it, right? I believe so. Yeah, you don't have to dry it. Uh -uh. I think sure. when you're drying it, unless you dry it in a freeze dryer, then you lose the ideas and you're losing all those terps. So right? the, the work is really the washing part, which should be pretty easy, right? I mean, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Pretty it's not that bad. It's not. It's just messy and messy and time consuming. And... Yeah. Make it so bad. Man, I'm sure that we, you know what we'll do, man? Let's put on a, like a dead, maybe like live 79 album, bro. You know, like the three hour one. You'd want to go a little earlier. You'd want more like a 74, probably. I'd rather be yeah. stuck on the boat with my brother. Thing. Yeah, like 73, 74 is where you get a little spacier January, you know? All right, I tap out again. That was my fault, man. That's okay. Yeah. All right. Do you, now you know. What is the, like, do you have to do the opposite stuff in BC? I mean, we're pretty dry here. As far as being in British Columbia, do you have to dehumidify the room and stuff like that? No, I mean, just think about your house. You know, if you're running forced air and it's winter time, depending on how cold it is outside, your house environment is usually fairly dry. Right. But the house is yeah, around right. about 30 something. Um, I do have like a yeah. yell space that um, I can get. I mean, outside, it's like probably 90 something. But that forced air, the furnace definitely yeah. dries the air out. Um, the uh, yeah, I should pull it up right now, but the crawl space is what I'm going to go for. So it, the only difference is exposed to room air when you guys leave stuff unsealed or out for a reason but whenever it's in your controlled environments you're good so yeah. what's the like, system you've ever dry when it didn't smell like hay yeah i don't know i know that i've done the hay specifically in colorado like on my second or third crop, crop when i just realized that i grew about probably four pounds of weed and my buddy that like qps is like this doesn't smell good at all dude and I was like, all of it smells like this, though. It looked good, but the, yeah, it just did not have any turby smell. And that probably went quick. It, definitely less than a week. 
Um, and it also probably had high temps off my good old HPS is in flower due to some AC failure, but the buds still look pretty good. And it stink when you've ever had a harvest that the whole harvest was almost unmarketable for an a operator error. Oh man, that sucks. Especially from just processing, you know, just from drying it. It's rough. But it's rough. That, that yeah. anatrol thing. That, that's like the, 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 the can of connoisseur type of a curing device. It was a temperature controlled, humidity controlled bridge. You can put your buds in. I think it's Canatrol. I think there's one or two DDC that I've tried it. But yeah. Should be able to, should be able to get it close, man. That's what jarring or keeping it in a five gallon bucket. Once you get close, I think that's what it's all about, man. It's just learning a little bit. You learn by feel. I think four days, four to five days. I've been able to pull off a dry and still get it to taste decent. Because I'm telling you, the trick is, I mean, under three, good luck, man. But uh, the trick is don't let it fully dry out. You know, if it's, you know, if you're burping it and getting a lot of moisture out of it in the beginning, I think it's still doing the same kind of chemical stuff, which is right. And shout out, man. Let's use the tools we have. Integra, man. Uh, heck, I don't know. Crambo, yeah. just throw one of those in right now. I'll, let me tell you about it. Here we go. You know what the most important time in your grow is? Is when you get that harvest down, you want to protect that stash, man. Boost. Integra Boost. Integra-products.com. Boost has the two-way humidification control. You're not going to get it too wet. It's not going to get too dry. And they have an indicator card to let you know that the boost packs are still working for you. So protect your harvest, whether it's just a couple grams, carry it around in your eighth all the way up to seven pounds with their 420 gram pack. Integra-products.com. We'll hook you up coupon code DUDE. And don't forget, their boost sticks are out. Check out their boost sticks for pre-rolls, man. It's a great it's a little humidification stick that'll slide right in with your pre-roll container. Super great way to keep them fresh. Integra-products.com. About code, dude. You need some of those, man. Have I ever shown you the ones and they're just like water? It's like it sucked up so much water. Like it's, it's like, they, yeah. yeah, they have their capacities for sure, but that's amazing. also why it can help you. you. If you go in too dry or too wet in your containers, those can definitely give you some insurance within reason. It's huge, too much, man. It is so huge. Much. I don't even have any. Really could use some. Don't make me go buy them. We'll get you taken care of. If you I will go buy some and support. If I get handed in grow store that's still open, raw. Right. What's called the tell the report? Why well, have you seen more clothes than I know? Way to grow in Fort Collins, a long standing uh, way to cr uh, way to grow uh, west in Denver just closed in Denver, too. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot. I, you know, I sell. Uh, you know, recharge to these guys. And it is a lot of stores are closing or just slow as all hell. Man. And for DGC, not in Colorado, it's hard to even explain way to grow. <clears throat> this is like the, you know, this isn't your average hydro store. This is like the biggest, best place, you know? No, man. It was a place you would go to when you didn't want to be followed home, though. You know, it was <laughs> right. like those eights, you know, hey, we'll go there and we'll go someplace else afterwards. Those aren't the days anymore. Now they're ordering bags of soil from Amazon to your house. You know? Oh, really? Who's doing that? People are. I've been, you know, looking at cocoa core. I'm always interested in, in you know, trying different cocoa cores and all that. And, dude, they will just, Amazon will send a bag of not even compressed bricks. Well, it's like, you know, whatever. You know, whatever the, Yeah. Yeah, just a big bag of cocoa core to your house or wiggle worm or whatever. How they do that. Well, uh, yeah, it's changing times for sure. I like to see the growth stores keep hanging out though because uh, you, I, you need them. There are certain reasons you need them. I, CO2 for me is one like staple. I got to go get my refill. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm putting a bummer. Way to grow one out, man. They had eight, they had $8 CO2s. I, uh, the hangar is right next to Air Gas or General Gas, one of those places. $22 per uh, CO2, per, per 20 pound tank, right? That's too much, man. I got gas coming out of my house. All right. They just make gas. It comes from the center of the earth or And you know, there's plenty. No, I'm just kidding. I have a propane tank at my house already. My house runs on liquid propane. So I got 200 feet of gas line. 
Yeah. Your grandma, you want to hang out this weekend, man? <laughs> you know, I love gas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, you don't have to dig the gas line too, too deep, like 18 inches, I think. Anybody that doesn't know a, a, a CO2 burner will kick on and off by a CO2 controller with its set points. Usually the smallest one they used to have, which is hard to find, if you can find it as a two burner, meaning there's two like pilot, like lights yeah. that go on or a four burner, it's definitely uh, applicable. It'll add heat to your grow, but they don't run for that long. They're pretty effective at producing CO2. So that's only negative is the heat that they can produce. But if you have the right HVAC, you can handle it. $22 isn't bad for refill. If a refill lasts you a month, I say, because that's where I'm at. I don't, and I bought an extra tank. I, I'm pretty good to go. Um, I don't want I have to three eat. tanks, and I still run out of CO2. You know, so I'm over it, man. How does this happen? Three tanks? Instead of like, oh, I've got, I've got these two tanks that are empty, and I'm just waiting for the third one. Of three days after that, I go. Well, I want to shout out to some DDC producers here, man. Thank you, DDC producers, for making the show happen. Um, you can hook it up before we still haven't fully announced. You can get tickets. DDC producers, just log into Patreon. DDC Cup tickets are on sale now with the 25% discount to you. Banner got everything rocking earlier this week. So go Thank check that matter. out. Get everything locked in, as well as all the coupon codes are listed there as far as for real growers. Hot deals with 30% off. Uh, my posts from the grow and our 420 happy hour we post up on patreon or do it live every friday 420 i do want to shout out some cats like smokes a lot og and kevin nigger up dgc hey, christopher trish could you imagine if that is your real last name you know most popular guy in high school right <laughs> christopher kush uh, and I want to shout out Banner. Banner's been working his butt off for this event, and uh, I appreciate it, man. We all appreciate it. The DGC, when this thing goes off, badass, like it does every year. I know. Everyone's yeah. going to get high. That's right, man. We, we might even give you a high five, so <laughs> we might be giving a high. Well, I'm high. Well, I just keep, keep holding this pipe. I think I need to use it as a little, like a little tea, like a little nipple stress. <laughs> oh, Bechtopia just... Uh, <laughs> Only fans thousand dollars to the super chat. Just only uh, only fans slash dude grows. <laughs> so it's awesome. Pop it, like, subscribe, guys. Another way to help support the show. And I hope everybody is having a good weekend, honestly, and enjoying their grow. Um, and yeah, if you can, if you have a local grow store by you, it is it is cool to try and support these guys. Sometimes not let uh, you know. I don't know. Amazon is convenient. We're all, we're all, at least I am guilty a little bit of on some of that, but there are some things just like hanging out, getting out of the house, talking to your girlies at the store. That's a good time. I will say though, I spend a lot, or I uh, buy from Amazon and I sell a lot on Amazon and you're dealing with people. You're dealing with me or Banner and, uh, you know, feeding our families. So as much as Amazon takes a nice big cut of it, I don't know. They've been our right partners to me, to be honest with you. It's all about the dealing with, I see your roundabout way of dealing with people, but hard for me. Yeah, there's a lot of people that you don't need a storefront anymore. You don't need some, you know, huge, you used to need a whole storefront or to figure out a way to get people to sell your product. So you're, you know what, you're knocking on, and maybe not knocking on doors, but going and visiting managers and trying to get them to stock your stuff. And man, it, it is pretty neat. You know, that you, that they'll give you an opportunity for a store. Shoot, YouTube gives us an opportunity to have our own TV station, you know, or a TV channel. So as much as they hate on us or Amazon will cause us agita every now and again, <laughs> and you got to take the good with the bad. There's a lot of good with these. Nothing I hate more than some agita. Yes, agita. How about this? Barona. Yes, it's the new way. The new way. Let's take it to uh, oh, kind of a ball prohibition report. You hit. I surprised I you did a video on stopping your stink with prohibition. Like, oh, seems minor now. Who needs to stop the stink? You know, what I'm but it's actually a lot of the uh, a lot of the comments. I just you know I found out a couple things about carbon filters. And the one big thing I didn't know till recently is how bad humidity is for carbon filters. That you get, you know, 60s, 
uh, is where you kind of need to be, or I should say anything above 70%, uh, you're clogging up the filter and really reducing the life of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to get that out. So I made a video. I put it on Instagram. It's over on the Real Growers Instagram if anybody wants to follow me. Uh, but just some basic stuff. I think you only have a minute there. And so best practices. What I take yeah. back back that I said, oh, it's prohibition land. You don't need one because I know people can be living, you know, in a condo or apartment. Shit can get loud just out of respect, even though you might not have the law coming at you. You don't want to be pissing off your neighbors. I mean, your wife. Or my mother-in-law. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't have to. It's not just for getting busted by the cops. You ready? Carbon filters. They're not just for getting busted by the cops anymore. <laughs> That's a good slogan, all right? Uh, anyway, man, just some stuff. If you do have carbon filters, uh, just you can turn the fan either way. You can push through it or you can pull through it. Man, pull through that thing so you actually get the benefit of that pre-filter. Think. Really, does anybody recommend pushing through carbon? You can. But then you we'll can. have a pre-filter there, though. To rent. That's a, eh. Maybe I'm being dumb. If, if if it's a dumb suggestion, maybe it's because I've done it before. <laughs> it's a, it's a, anyway, I man. No, I got you. Go ahead. Yeah, humid, humidity destroys carbon filters. We know that. And it, some of them are loud. If you've got a, they, we used to use those big 12 inch can fan, uh, can fans rather, and uh, they're loud. So if you put a piece of ducting on top of a carbon filter, A, it moves the air around. So it's not just cycling the same air, you know, it at least pushes it over somewhere, but it quiets them down too. I found a technique too. If you take a cardboard box, and you just like put it over like the bell housing. It seems insane, right? That you just put like this enclosure on it, but making this like square around the the, the roundness, it literally, it cut wow. the sound in half instantly. So if you just put a cardboard box over the bell of the fan, cut the noise out. It's kind of crazy. And they want some kind of resistance or back pressure because it's used to, you know, it's designed for pushing through a pipe in our tube. Or I will, I, we, I used to use can fans, use different variations, one like a hurricane fan. Then they came out with like the, the can max series, the can max eight, max F it, 10, 12. I was like, dear God, these are like little jet engines, but they are about <laughs> as loud as little jet engines as well. Yeah. And it's changed. Said it, say it again. The AC infinity fans are the way to go. They're the quietest fan out there where I don't need to do anything to it to try and change the level of it. And typically with the controller, it only ramps up. It knows how to ramp. You can set a max speed rating on it. If like, hey, right. speed seven's a bit loud. Let's dial that down. I mean, I can only go at four before my kid hears it. Or literally, again, which I'm not complaining. Uh, my mother-in-law will be like, I can hear your fan. She, her grow tent's like close to above her room, which is, maybe I should relocate that. So, so you need to send your mother-in-law down here, man. My mother-in-law's like, <laughs> hey, is this working for you, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really like Anyway. That's the best thing she's ever said to me. It's, um, yeah, check them out. So let's take it to, Absolutely. we did bring some of uh, Prohibition still happening. So Wisconsin, we have a comment here, best carbon filters by Wisco Farmer 420 off dudegrows.com. If you go to dudegrows.com, coupon code strain dependent will help you create your, in, your account if you need that. So go on over there, create an account, and you can comment. We can get on the show. Where we go to look to get you on the show. Wisco Farmer says, what up, DGC? I'm trying to figure out what's best with what's the best carbon filter I can get. I have a six inch AC infinity filter in there right now, but I still smell the plants as soon as I walk into my apartment. And that is a no good as or no go as I as well as I like in Wisco. Right. Oh, okay. Because Wisco's Wisconsin. Got it. Worse yet, yes, they still are in veg. But yeah, that's just what got me wondering what the laws were. Um, yeah, let's hit those in a minute. This is this filter is not the old one. Uh, with the, and the, damn, he's still in veg. Uh, so it's a, sh a shorter filter. And I had the longer one right before this, but I don't think that one lasted that long either. Only in a three by three, three by five tent. So six inch filter, a three by five tent in veg, I would think should be good. I would think so too. What do we do? You know, there's got to be something. Is there a leak in your vent or, you know, in your O's or something like that? 
not uh something's got to be gone or did you if you have the the part that i did get to i know if you had a yeah, yeah. inside inside the tent did it get too humid and clog up your fan or i'm sorry your fender maybe running another one um as well in the outside area i mean maybe if you think you're four inch with like dialed all the way down you'll barely even hear it if hear it just gently scrubbing the air out by your front doorway or by your living area or the long room you're in isn't a horrible idea uh he could just have pretty stanky genetics you're right as far as um the six inch isn't enough and or upsize to the eight and don't think you're wasting on that six inch because then you take that six inch and like i said you're going to use that as a scrub filter when you harvest you're going to use it out in your room where the ambient air is and then the eight inch is in for the tent, but still, when I see it, three by five, ten, and eight inch seems big to me. Yeah, well, I have uh, a six inch over there. Handled the two by four really well. Let's see what is up with Wisconsin here. Normal, yeah, right. They got. Uh, ooh, they're still pretty harsh. Possession of any amount, first offense, misdemeanor, up to a thousand dollar fine. Um, possession. Oh, second time, it's a, a felony. You get caught twice with incarceration of three Jeez. to five years. So Once that's it. No, so that's in a math years. If a jury's willing to convict, no. Like, this isn't mandatory minimum shiz. This is Wisconsin. Yeah. Man, there's a lot of people that, that don't smoke weed in Wisconsin. I bet you they're lively. You're new. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, that if you're, I was looking for a jury to convict on a weed conviction, I might start in Wisconsin. <laughs> uh, yeah, four plants or fewer is any uh, felony. So any any cultivation is a felony. Hey, um, it's pretty cool here th that normal deal. includes uh, civil forfeiture laws. If you guys understand civil, civil forfeiture, it's just legal stealing. And pretty much all controlled substances in Wisconsin, if you get busted with any controlled substance, they can just take any money you have on you. Crazy. And you're, yeah. You know, that's when they used to have this, I can't remember what it's called, zero tolerance or something, Florida. And I mean, if they found a roach, they could take your car, your speedboat, whatever the hell they want. Crazy. Yeah. Just don't have any stuff you're, you're slinging like that. They also have the, uh, the low THC law or low THC. This state has passed a low THC law, which sounds lame allowing for the use of cannabis extracts that are high in CBD and low in THC in an instance where a physician has recommended such treatment. But doesn't that give you, doesn't that give you an opening to say, Hey, it was CBD, man. You can't search my house. CBD is legal. It's CBD. How are you going to tell us not CBD until you break my door down, grab some and test it? Yeah. Well, most definitely. I think that's an option. I like it, Scotty. I like it. This is again reminding me we were going to reach out maybe to Pop Brothers or Law or get, we need another, maybe a law panel show. I'll get a gavel with that and we'll play. He can, you know, but Crabble, you can get the dong dong music like the law and order. <laughs> I mean, I'm into this. I'm loving it. Scott's having you ever hang out with lawyers it. before, man? <laughs> um, that's why I was wondering if we, should we only have one uh, pot attorney on the show? I think a panel might be troublesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, might be. Who knows, man? These are not trying to hang out with Girl. lawyers. As little as stories. That's good. It's good to learn the law. Is good to learn maybe what's going on. I mean, prohibition is definitely falling a bit. Or what to say? That's the biggest potential encounter, right? What to say when you're pulled over? If you got an eighth in the car, or if you've been token, or if they're saying we want to do field sobriety. I mean, better revisit those best practices. It's been a while. Yes. Yes, it has. Man, I had some comments on uh what it was I think this was from uh Wisco Grow when it from his post. But this is from Virginia Cough Factory, and they're in Virginia, I'm going to assume. I uh, had a sheriff pull up. I smelt it when I went outside. He was super nice and didn't mention it. Virginia is a new place, in my opinion. DGC effing rocks. Right on, brother. I appreciate that. And I'm telling you, it's crazy, right? In Virginia, pop will show up and it'll smell like weed and they'll just ignore it. Go along. It's crazy. I've had a cop, I've had known of my buddies who got Florida doing that for 10 years now. And plenty of cops, yeah. they, they see the writing on the wall with everything else to deal with. A different, quote, crisis is going on, different 
substances, if you will. Cannabis is the least of their worries. You don't see a lot of cannabis zombies out there, you know? You know? No. Um, it, uh, hey, hey, it's monkey nuts. Hey, uh, um, monkey nuts. <laughs> monkey nuts. Uh, apparently, since I started growing in Montana, between Billings and Roundup, the smell crosses whoa between Billings and Round. As he's speaking, I had to put that one on. How cool is that to be from Roundup, Montana? And the smell crosses Highway 87 so thick, people smell it in their cars. Now some people say, "You smell like the whole highway." <laughs> yeah, he's stinking up the whole highway, man. They go to his house, and they're just like, "Dude, this house smells like the highway." It's it's pretty funny, no? Blame skunks, man. Just blame skunks. I got a side question for you. Since the Saturday show, of uh, my bro operates a little, like a little almost side, like mini. It's almost like a shack Airbnb out by on his house. And a couple over the holidays requested a refund because two skunks got in a fight under the deck under the shack and just it's an act of God, bro. Like, that is an act of God. Airbnb. <laughs> I mean, it basically made it unstable, right? And I was like, I don't know. Is that what you say? Like, hey, out of my hands. Mother Nature will do what she does. <laughs> you know? Good luck, man. Good. That's another full-time job. We'll talk about Amazon. I got that place uh, in Costa Rica on Airbnb and those things. It's another job, man. How many jobs you've got? Bro? It's not like it used to be. Like seven jobs. It, back in the day when people wanted to hold you accountable, you can way more easily be like, yeah, you know what? Just at all. Now it's like, oh, I got so many places to rate you. I'm going to rate you here. I'm going to rate you there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You said rate. So we're, we're at, man. What rate? Yes. What do you got? You star um, rating. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want a five star. Uh, no, never. Hey, you just called me about tonight. We'll have to revisit my. <laughs> my airbnb rating on my account that i had to cancel uh cancel we're all right now but that was oh come on at least it was this one quote from it the house smelled of a strong smell of raw cannabis odor i love that they choose to use that well hey uh, well the dgc does little... it raw there's a t-shirt for you there you are man all right so i'm sneaking some grow talk ready PNW Farmer, why do some say using a carbon filter in your last weeks will take the smell off your weed? Does it or not? I have heard that before. Oh, uh, uh, carbon filters will rob terps. I do not believe that can be true. I'm not a, a scientist, but the terps either volatile it into the air for you know from environmental reasons. Or they don't. So once they're in the air, that carbon filter can can clean whatever is in the air. But it doesn't magically suck them off your plant. Like o- Ozium started that rumor. Um, he did. <laughs> no, I'm saying I, I heard. I, I I feel like Ozium started that rumor. You know, oh, I heard. I heard carbon filters rob your derps. Yeah, I was thinking that we didn't talk about an option for carbon filters. You can just get an ozone generator and just destroy everyone's sense of smell forever. I think I want I want to believe that in my bro science brain, but I agree with what you're saying because it's like, well, I mean, I don't know. Well, that's just magically whipping them off. I got an analogy like, man, if you just like take a doozy and you leave the door closed without putting on the fan, still stinks for a while, might get into the walls a little bit. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> <laughs> don't be that guy at the party. You just close the door. Don't turn turn off the fan. You want to make a point? <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? You mean that's uh, how you get poo terps, right? Right, right Banner? Banner's always talking about poo terps. I think that's how you mm, get them. That's why. And by the way, this is a great name. So this is James Fulgram. Hey. It's pretty good, right? Yeah, I, I got Grambo and Fulgram here, all right, man? That's Josh Grambo. That's James Fulgram. Dude, that's pretty good. And speaking right. of Graham, shout Dude, out to my buddy Hillary Graham Hugh. out in Manchester, UK. I was talking with a uh, DGC in Manchester yesterday. If I, could, I love the UK DGC. Hit me up. Love it. You should do like the three tenors and just do three grams. Oh. Three grams. 
I'm a, I'm a base. Uh, James Bullgrant uh, says, dude, just in case you come over and ask to use the bathroom, I run two carbon filters, one inside the tent and one outside. Uh, so one inside and one outside. Uh, one's a tent on a 10 inch line with a heavy duty fan. It still stinks up the whole upstairs for the final month yeah. of flower, LOL. Hey, let's talk about that really quick because you don't want to be ripping air through that too quick. You got to match that pan with the carbon to let the carbon do its work. Um, One inside the tent, though, and one outside. I wonder if the one inside just... Oh, I see. Because you know, your fan speed's apical to your, your carbon filter or else it'll pull through too quick. Yeah, I want a chance to stick. Yeah, this is, that is a good point. And most fans, uh, carbon filters are all rated to the CFM that you want to run through them. I don't know if you can actually run through. Well, obviously, there is a too slow of a speed if it's not handling your odor. There's obviously the, the right speed you want to try and add. But that's why you want to have a fan with like a lot of speed. A lot of speed. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys can uh, see this. I, I grabbed it out of my phone real quick. I walked into a public bathroom the other day in Denver. And what I what I saw was a uh, a carbon filter full setup inside of the bathroom. I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" And so that's how we're living in Denver. We got carbon filters for days, son. I had to take a picture. I was like, "No one will believe this. This is hysterical." He did left it there. He did. Oh, we got that is. But well, what is that? It's just not working in my grow anymore. So I just throw it in like bathroom. Burrito day, bro. Burrito day. You got to do what you got to do. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. Crazy. So we got some hey, more comments and fun stuff. I uh, got to do a little comment. Like, subscribe. People will help grow the show. Share it with everybody you can. And go to the pros list if you're a grower. Dudegrows.com forward slash pro. You heard me mentioning AC Infinity Tents and fans, as well as other fine grow equipment on the show. That's where all the coupon codes are listed. Whether you're shopping on Amazon, their site, we got seen tier now over there. Canna, we've got a ways for you to save money on your grow with DDC vetted here. Dudegrows.com forward slash pros. Check them all out. And uh, a few more. Uh, are you all at you set this up, Scotty? He did got been uh wanted to say something, and that is that my AC Infinity tent uh had the fan going on speed one. And so when that's why he's talked about a fan with 10 speeds with a bunch of speeds so when mine turns on it's going super slow and it's just pulling just the most gentle amount of air there's a super gentle air exchange for dry so yeah it's pretty cool man so get a span with a lot of speed shout out ac what happened to banner uh banner's here man he's just <laughs> banner's now on the dabs and he's changed bro it's all quiet and <laughs> stuff we're going to have an intervention afterwards, man. What's up, dude? <laughs> he's, getting dabbed. he's getting dabbed out. No, what's up, oh, dude? Hey, you know what? what? On camera, this is actually about you. And ready? Look what it says. A hunter wants to press some nugs. So much work to do it right. And so I just got a bunch of people telling us how to make it easy. Okay. Right? Yeah. Bring it. You want to take your friendly neighborhood grower, dude, or you want me to? Got it. it. Says your friendly neighborhood grower. I like to press homegrown flour into rosin. No mash bags needed. Just use the pre press to make pop and press in a folded parchment paper. Easy enough. Then after pressing, make edibles with the used pucks. They still pack a great punch. Limited waste in multiple uses. Products made from each plant. I like it. Cool, right? Yeah, 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 always, for sure. Always, I mean, we got uh, the new power. pucks, man. They got a lot of extra juice in there, so yeah. Yeah, your, your pucks. Yeah, yeah, that's a t-shirt for you. <laughs> what does it You mean? know, you can believe you can believe me about pucks because I got a zamboni. Uh, yeah. deep in the scene, I don't know what nuke your pucks means. All right, <laughs> nuke your pucks, bro. All right, so um. Uh, two grows tree, two grows tree. I press my flower after a three quarter way dry. So they don't let it get all the way dry. It's still got a ton of moisture in it. <clears throat> Once it's like 65% humidity. If you do it immediately, you can avoid, avoid washing and get a pretty clean product. Almost live hash rosin looking, but actually pressed with flour. 
This is good stuff, man. I'm going to try this. I'll grow a couple plants, press one whole one, and get like a 15 to 25% yield. Come on, there's got to be a lot of water. So you're getting that big of a yield. That's a crazy yield. But so maybe not. Come on over and I'll definitely smoke some of your yeah, house while we're throwing roof, you know, I mean, stuff like that out there. I, I've heard of uh, people doing flower, like they'll pick it at week six and do flower presses. So that way, like the, the turps are a little bit uh, less ripe, you know. You try yeah, that. Well, you also are looking for that color. If you get that super light color, as opposed to if you wait till they amber up a little bit. Uh, but anyway, it says just the home grower and saving myself some money because rosin is pretty expensive in Connecticut where I'm at. Also sober from hard drugs and alcohol for over three years now, thanks to this wonderful plant. Great show, guys. Oh, yeah, man. That's awesome. Cheers. Uh, yeah, very cool, man. Very good. Anyway, these are good, man. Except they just totally lost my place. Hang on, ready? Well, I got it. one more from LA 109 108. I just pressed all of my trim. Just got a juice and we'll box on. Oh, this is the uh, one we had uh, featured on the other show, the little handheld press. Yeah. Actually, oh, there's well, light you can do. That's okay. Not everybody listens to every show. We got it. This is one of those little neat handheld press um, for like 100, oh, two, less than 200 bucks. It says it came with yeah. a long press and it's super easy process. Totally agree with pressing flowers feels wrong. So pollen press would be, I wonder if you can stick sort of that super easy move of where you can get, uh, you could knock off, I know people will say this is rough, but knock off trikes. I used to knock off trikes with dry ice and get the powder mm -hmm. and shake it on a micron bag and press in that would probably, they you know, have a pretty cool product. Man, you gotta beat out those trichomes with the dry ice though. I've oh. definitely done that before and I just didn't really understand all the damage. I don't think I'd want to do that now. Trichometer. Trichometer. I dare you to wear that shirt, Rambo. <laughs> trichometer? I am a human trichometer. I will tell you. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, while we're giving yeah. out the shout outs to uh, DGC, can I mention I sent you guys the uh, thing in the group text with the. Remember the Fire Blazer? He has MS. He's in and out of the hospital. He can barely move. Do, his, yeah. His two good fingers to watch the show and message us. So I just want to take a shout, uh, shout out to the Fire Blazer, man. If you see this, we really. I sent your message to everyone in the group chat. We're thinking about you, bro. Thank you. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Right on. Glad to yeah, keep you coming. Bow and Yes, sir. On a. Uh, you got it, Scotty. I got it. Hey, this is true. We should do a, uh, is it real? Is this real? Despite banner, despite widespread, widespread legalization, fewer young people find it easy to get. I cannot be true. What? Yeah, the weed is everywhere now. I think fewer young, everybody is understanding cannabis now and getting a real education about you know like your parents are talking to you about weed these days you're seeing people use weed just like they're using you know drinking beers it's just common and kids can get beer i don't know this is from culture magazine is this just like when that cannabis lobby okay. I, I mean this is where it lost me it says this paper examines the effect of the early ongoing stages of COVID-19 pandemic period on youth perceptions of cannabis access over time since the onset of the Cannabis Act in 2018 and a large sample of Canadian youth. Did you call me? Of yeah. course. I'm out. I, literally I'm out and clear. Dude. I, I, closed, and clear. I closed it. Yeah. I, By the it, title, it, I think we call BS. I mean, cannabis access has been... Uh, it, the, the thing is, maybe they're, they're not realizing that I don't think the young people want it as much. Um, actually... My son is, you know, of legal age, 19, and quite a few of his friends, when I'm willing to hook them up with just some nice flour, they're all really appreciative. But concentrates and vape pens, but I'm also trying to teach them, to try this. Like, I don't know about, you know, what's in your your, your cart. Well, out of the kids' unions, I get it, but. Hang on, you're telling me they have butterfly knife carts. No, but seriously, carts that are super low profile. And more kids aren't hitting them. I mean, how many kids hit the regular nicotine vapes? Uh, so I think that, like, yeah, I brought this up just because it seems like we have a lobby too. You know, the pro cannabis lobby. We talk about corporate cannabis and all that. They are spending a lot of money on putting this crap out there. I agree. I'm trying to help. 
you give me a report, by the way, on how long that butterfly, show me some of your moves there again, your butterfly <laughs> my heart. How long that lasts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like these guys though, man. They've got ridiculous, uh, ridiculous babes. You know, they've got, you know, Scott in real life, you know, he always has like weird gadgets and hilarious things, but I think this one's my favorite of all time. The butterfly vape. Vape necklace is pretty good though, man. That one at least is practical. This one's just ridiculous. (laughs) Ridiculous, man. It's practical, bro. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, Lord, no, don't make me go don't make me google dog ball see what we find dog ball oh, it is saturday man we can we can get loose man we can get loose thanks for that grambo you should do this grambo's a comedian uh, i call this one meanwhile i'm in colorado the gateway show i've been to this this is a comedy oh, yeah, show this is, this is a, another buddy yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know this guy, they they hang out, they do their set at a comedy club, then go out with everybody. Usually it's sponsored by a dispo or some person yeah. is just magically handing joints to everybody. Yeah. Everybody gets high, then they go and do their sets again. And some people they find that are stoners that can do it. Some people they find that are rookies and get so lit. I've That's never funny. even been considered for that show once because I'm going to go out and do my set. Then I'm going to get high. I'm going to come right back out and do the same exact thing. It doesn't affect me at all. But yeah, Billy Anderson, come man, on. that guy has been grinding this pot show for like three years, crisscrossing the country. He uh, had been doing it at the Church of Cannabis. That's where I met him. And yeah, Billy, man, if you ever see uh, the Gateway Show, go support him. He's an awesome dude. He's got glow in the dark, light up trays. Get a tray. They're awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was a very good experience. So I'll give it a thumbs up. Nice. I'd love to see you on there next time it comes to Colorado. One of these days. Just fake it, all right? Fake it. Whoa, man. So that's that's Meanwhile in Colorado, right? Maybe yes. I, right, that was my new hashtag. I love it. Was he Meanwhile in Florida, dude? <sighs> Got it. Woman sues Hershey. <laughs> Ring a bow. Her in it. Woman, it, what is it? Hershey's for five billion over false advertising on holiday themed Reese's shapes. Plaintiff <laughs> claims the company is deceiving customers by depicting different shapes than what's actually in the package. So this is Reese's peanut butter pumpkins. Yeah, it's five billion dollars. <laughs> of course, it's in Florida. In Florida, core. Uh, She's suing Reese's for five billion dollars because the. Uh, because the, the snowmen don't look like snowmen. The pumpkins don't look like pumpkins. <laughs> You've got to admit, man, what's happening? When I got to, to be an adult and they didn't expect it to get this weird, man. <laughs> Is that where you can just do what you want? You can just take 20 bucks and decide to sue somebody and file the papers? Perfect. The lady did at McDonald's, I think, actually got burnt. At first, I thought that was kind of ridiculous, you know, getting sued for still coffee, but. You know, her was injury involved. Maybe she this uh, one's yeah, for it's gotta be something like yeah. Yeah, she probably got a couple hundred grand. Yeah. This I makes the coffee it. lady but, look like, you know, like the most legit thing ever, a pumpkin. <laughs> as oh, much I as I must thought. say I have had that thought, I've been quite offended. Where it's like you call that Santa Claus, it's not even you're not even trying, but it never occurred to me to sue. Ah, you know what occurred to me? It's just not buy it next time. So it's not- uh, I got this meanwhile in Florida just for you, dude. You know, just because I know you're like, uh, and I just know this will turn your stuff. Look at that. And look at that camper. <laughs> what is happening? You know, oh, yeah. we'll look pizza diner, diners out. F-150 <laughs> with a uh, one-ton camper on it. As long as you're just an handful of 20, staying 20 or below, you're good. What the hell? Awesome. Awesome. It's hold on, man. Come on, it's Saturday. Well, sh- dude, I don't want a shout out. Can I take the first shout out to be headed? Yeah, no, let me do them. And how okay, JR Token and OC Deb, congratulations. Uh, happy anniversary. And I'm just I'm tripping over how old I must be if JR is the same age as me. I thought he said. Did he say 36 years of being married or 26? I thought 26, but I'm not sure. 
26? Dude, I got to look it up now. I was shocked. Maybe it was... No, because I've been married 20 years, man. Dude, it was like 36 years. And I was like, oh my God. And so that is amazing. Dude, that's a hell of a partner. So congratulations, OC Dev and JR Token. And uh, congratulations, Oka Jim. And all right, because he's in that whole mix too. I'm sure he's done something. <laughs> Yo, careful. Well, that's what hell family though over there, man. So big your island know. mix, baby. Go. Yeah. I got crazy cousin Bobby, an Oki Grower 88. What's up, DGC? Ooh, a Viking. And I got Bad Moon Viking. I always try to sing Bad Moon Rising with Bad Moon Viking. They chickened out. Bad Moon Viking. Oh. You may have the credence, man. I don't know. Oh, pop smoke. Smokey. I was Smokey Robinson, man. Then what the uh, isn't what Lebowski lost was some credence tape of some credence. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. Hope, I wouldn't hold out much hope for the credence. Nice. But you're all right. It's digitgrows dot com forward slash support where these. DGC helping the show out, becoming DGC producers. Uh, going to be working hard for you in 2024, guys, getting some exclusive deals uh, as well as a little bit more content. Like I said, we've we heard of maybe it was the last show I'm working on uh, getting my first. I'm like, I never would get AirPods or wireless ear things as you see my cord hidden behind me. Uh, but trying to do some live stuff in the grow over on DGC Discord, working with Soup on that for the patrons. Just be a little bit more interactive because without you guys, we don't have a dude grow show. So consider dudegrows.com forward slash support. It would like be before when we'd just be talking to each other on the phone. And we we're like, dude, we should have <laughs> a podcast like this. <laughs> we'd go back to that. Then Grambo's calling in, man. Let's put him on three way. <laughs> I love being put on three way. Yeah, you knew it. I just wait. I just waited, man. You can't even make a three-way calling joke anymore, right, Rambo? Never good, bro. Never good. Just having fun. Um, this is the part where I'm supposed to make you laugh. You know, it's Saturday. Okay. I like it. I said, you just check this out. First off, just because we're stoners. I never knew this is how they did this, man. Look at this. This is how they make a spear. When they make a, a like a metal spear, you know, for, for you know, marine or whatever. What? Dude, they exploded? Amazing, right? They exploded from the inside. They put like, oh. you know, whatever, and a C4 in there or whatever. And it's this metal plate. And they they make these flat metal plates and they explode it. It's neat, right? It's going to be used for. Is that some big type of buoy? It's a buoy. No. But those aren't buoys. <laughs> <laughs> I get I don't know what that reference is, but I get <laughs> Do it, favor, man. Come on, just a good meme. Patio Toker. It would the memes like uh have been really good lately, man. There haven't been that many, but the ones that have have been pretty funny. Man. Yeah, some more guys. Dudegrows.com. That's where we're getting the memes. Anybody can make a meme over there. Use code uh strain dependent if you need to create a, an account for your invite code. But this is good. Who do you got? Patio Toker? <laughs> yeah. So this date. Day three of Christmas break, 10 a.m. after walking the dogs, and it's Homer looking really ripped, and Bart and Lisa looking at him, and uh, says the kids are getting suspicious. The children are getting suspicious. Yes. That's what it's called. That's what it is. Those are called uh, in between or smear frames, where they they have like weird faces in between to give like the effect of motion blur and things. So good use, patio toker. Shout out to you. Over there in Ireland. He's a real Ireland boy, Patty is. Shout out to you. Holy. Wow. It's awesome. Um, hey, do me a favor, Grandpa. You said, I put this on for you. You said that you were uh, getting, waiting for your personal trainer. Who's gonna be I am going to start doing personal training. My goal this year is to get abs. Yeah. Uh, you know, I want you to start by getting in shape with chair yoga. If what you- the hell? Are you familiar? Yeah, but chair yoga? Chair yoga. Yeah. Look, again, yeah. what about you, Is dude? That... You seem chair yoga type of person. No, you ain't having it? No, not really. He's like, dude, come on. Look at what's going on with that whole act, man. That whole That's dude. sexy Santa. Oh, no. I, I'm loving this. Here's my I'm question. Sure Is that AI? Go. I think he's AI. I don't think that's a real person. 
What size chair do you think he needs? The, the throne, the like, name of thrones. Yeah, Grambo left his Grambo left his Facebook on when he left uh, doing the show a couple of days ago, I, and it was I can't take weird. credit for this. It was just sticking in my house. Oh my god! All right, then a uh, uh, trigger warning for everybody. What is happening? This is. Oh my god! All right, all right, it's gonna. <laughs> Dude, that didn't do anything to you, man? No, to make you feel funny in any way? Looked away. <laughs> hey, this one was for you, man. Dude, these guys never do this in real life, man. This is a jet ski rescue. This is when they go in and I'm sure these people are putting themselves in pearl on purpose. Whoa. But, man, that is aggressive, right? That is aggressive. Like, I'm with tools. Whoa, what's the person doing there? Is that something where, because uh, they're just hanging out there, you know? I guess yeah. giant surf rescue. I guess that's someplace in Hawaii or something, dude. Huh. Wow. Skills to pay the bills, baby. And modern technology. Like, the ability to put yourself in danger, and you sometimes don't want to rely on it, but the ability with the rescue between helicopter, I mean, jet skis have taken Ooh. surfing so far. Super cool. So he crazy. nailed it. Yeah. You see him parallel park right up on that guy? That was great. It's crazy, man. I mean, they are crazy. God, how fun would it be to put your life in danger like that? It'd be a blast. Oh, God. oh, oh no. We're right there, Rambo. You are a living, you know? Oh, really? Speaking of two you know, you're did you ever do go to work with your dad day, dude? No, I, I didn't have it. Probably. Uh, maybe once. Maybe it was her dad. It was her dad. Our dad's shack. Oh, my God. Would you guys believe that tonight, tonight of all night, here on Saturday, tonight, Saturday night, I, am, I have tickets to go see DJ Diesel in person I'm going to go see Shaq in about nine hours. He's DJing here in Denver. I've had tickets for a month. I'm going to see DJ Diesel in a few like, hours. Shaq's a DJ too? Yep. He said it's a fi the only thing that's ever given him a rush as close to winning a championship is DJing. And I was like, oh, I got to see this. <laughs> well, we didn't get to the Shaq yet, man. Because that, that was her dad. Work with your dad yeah. Oh, you dad played it? Sorry, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's great. Why like, could you imagine your dad being shot? I'm gonna tell him I saw this video. I'm like, dude, I saw your daughter, and then he's gonna punch me. You know, I see dude's dad. His name is Kratos. <laughs> dude, dude would be a Kratos fan, right? Probably. Do you this like guy. God of War, dude? Are you are you a video game guy? Oh, this is real, right? Yeah, this is Kratos. He holds the world record for death diving. Wow. And he death dove like 90 meters with two axes. He spends oh, most of his time topless in Norway. And why wouldn't you? Daddy, what does he do? Wait a second. Is this Techno Viking? That's Techno Viking. I see you, Techno Viking. <laughs> no. I'm Kratos fan, right? I can Damn. like him. I want, I'm going to look yeah. like this guy. Somebody... This is my vow. I'm going to look like him in eight months. Oh. I'm coming, for you. I'm coming for you, Techno Viking. I'm coming for you. You are. Uh, hey, dude, I should call this Meanwhile in BC, because that's what I feel like BC is like, man. And then uh, this is, I probably, I really do think BC is like this, man. Look at this black bear, man. That is the most casual black bear I've ever seen. It's just hopping in the jacuzzi and... It's all about self dive I mean, is this what happens where you're at, man? Nice. That, this is very interesting. Uh, I guess I'd have to have a hot tub, plenty of black bears, but uh, man, I'd like to go hang with this thing. Can I go out <laughs> and get in? It's he's going outside. Look at him. He's going. The guy's doing a good job of not freaking out, too. Yeah, he went <laughs> outside. How ballsy. Oh, because yeah. if he freaks out, that black bear is going to kick his legs to get out of that hot tub and probably break the sidewall out of it in the process. So let that thing do what it will do. We can change the line. Right. 
Man, he's lugging out. I better hot tub him. There was getting no wrath out of that, man. He's going back inside. One more. I we have one more that hopefully makes you laugh, and that is that uh Banner's kind of a foodie. He's always cooking, doing like, you know, Greek food or uh, what's he do? He'll do Thai food. You know, like he'll do like legit stuff. And so I was thinking of getting him either a Ninja Air Fryer, which is kind of just a joke, but I got for Christmas. I love it, man. And uh, but I was like, oh, man, you know, I'll get him a sous vide. Okay. He seems like the fancy guy that would like a sous vide. So I didn't think you didn't need to get him a container, though, did you? You need to get him a pipe. You need to get him the machine, right? Oh, you don't see it, Rambo? <laughs> it's oh, I, it's the next one. I, I was on the first one. Oh, my God. It's, sorry. It's the soup being a toilet, man. I mean, I saw that, and I'm just like, well, what is happening, man? <laughs> what? I mean, I love people's creativity, but that one, Can uh, we call that one that Meanwhile is- in Tennessee? <laughs> uh, it's uh nashville's very sophisticated dude okay no, i was just there my buddy's from a place called hickman county yeah they do that they do that toilet suit slide that one up slide that one up to the meanwhile in florida if you would fair <laughs> man it's saturday morning let's just try to make you guys look. uh i like it i like it i consider my oven an air fryer if you will hang out with my neighbor who doesn't even own a microwave which is, I don't know, I think that's kind of gangster, but also kind of inconvenient at times. I'll <laughs> tell you why it's sucking up some butter. Oh, well, guys, <laughs> I've got a good time. Comment, like, subscribe. I uh, should be hanging out. Monday live panel. Come on, give a hang. 420 uh, live on YouTube. Of course, you can rewatch it if you missed the live show. It'll be on our tab. And uh, good rest of your weekend. Looking forward to seeing y'all out there. Stay higher, my friend. Take her easy, dude. Take her easy, Grambo. I could hate everybody. Happy Saturday. I'll tell Shaq you said hi. Night.